Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Gyan Sampada. And today we are going to continue with another type of thin film deposition technique which is nothing but molecular beam epitaxy. So just by looking at the name of the technique, what information can be collected is the question. So the term consists of three sub terms, one is molecular, second one is beam and third one is epitaxy. Molecular means we can relate that in thin film deposition technique instead of atoms molecules are involved. Coming to the second term which is beam, we can just guess that this term relates to the beam of atoms. Why so? Let us discuss later. Coming to the third term that is epitaxy. Epitaxy means orderly arrangement of atoms or molecules in order to form a thin film. So this is broadly what is molecular beam epitaxy. So let us discuss it in detail what actually it means. So from the heading we can say that molecular beam epitaxy is an epitaxy method for thin film deposition of especially single crystals. So this technique enables the deposition of single crystal films. So this is the main point. Also this technique is used for the deposition of some types of organic semiconductors and in this case molecules rather than atoms are evaporated and deposited onto the wafer or the substrate. That's why as the molecules are involved rather than atoms, the technique is named as molecular beam epitaxy instead of atomic beam epitaxy. Coming to the key features of MBE technique, first one is the low deposition rate that is the key feature. Then it requires a better vacuum. Coming to the third is the higher substrate temperature and another important thing is the directed atomic beams that is using the effusion cells. So what actually are effusion cells? Let us see. If you remember these four key features, easily we can explain the molecular beam epitaxy technique. So let us elaborate these key features and understand what are the method parameters. Molecular beam epitaxy takes place in high vacuum or even ultra high vacuum environment that is the pressure varies in between 10 raise to minus 8 to 10 raise to minus 12 torr. This is the first parameter. Coming to the second is the most important aspect of MBE which is the deposition rate and the deposition rate is typically less than 3000 nanometers per hour and that's why it allows the films to grow epitaxially. So there is an orderly arrangement of atoms or molecules onto the substrate so that finally we are getting a fine thin film that is growth is going to take place layer by layer atom by atom this is the second thing coming to the third one is with respect to the better vacuum so these deposition rates require proportionally better vacuum to achieve the same impurity levels as the other deposition techniques. So in each and every deposition technique we have observed that there is a vacuum chamber in which the thin film is formed and in this technique the vacuum chamber has to be high or even ultra high. So that is the condition put on in order to achieve good quality thin films. Coming to the next parameter is the absence of carrier gases. Till now we have studied in CVD process or MOCVD there were some carrier gases like hydrogen or nitrogen which used to carry the atoms from the target material onto the substrate so that thin film will be formed. But here we don't require any carrier gases and due to the absence of carrier gases and also because of the high or ultra high vacuum environment we get highest achievable purity of grown films which means we are getting a highly beneficial as well as a very good quality thin film whichever is required as per the application purposes. So this is about the method parameters which are elaborated based on the key features which we just saw in the previous slide. Next let us understand about the methodology how MBE is going to take place using the block diagram. So this is a rough layout of main chamber of molecular beam epitaxy system where we can observe there are four effusion cells which are something like a target material which are having the heating coils then RHEED gun then also the corresponding screen cryo panels as well as cryo pumps the substrate 
which is mounted and also there is a heating element the ionization gauze and it is connected to the buffer chamber. So how the working is going to take place in MBE technique let us study. In solid source MBE the elements such as gallium and arsenic in ultra pure form are heated in separate quasi knudsen effusion cells or electron beam evaporators until they begin to slowly sublime. So these effusion cells are nothing but the electron beam evaporators. So whichever thin film we want to be deposited on this substrate, separate elements are taken in each of the effusion cell. It is named as Knudsen effusion cell. These effusion cells are named as Knudsen effusion cells because these were developed by Martin Knudsen which contains a crucible, the heating filaments, also the water cooling system, heat shields and the orifice shutter. So that when the target material which we need to deposit as a thin film is going to get evaporated after heating, it will be directed towards the substrate and finally we get the thin film. So this is the work of nuts and effusion cells. So in physical vapor deposition technique, we were just heating it using electron beam or using a filament or laser anything of such kind and finally we would use to get a thin film but quality was not so good. But here using these nuts and effusion cells we are going to get a very good quality thin film. Why so? Let us study. Because the process is again the same. We are going to evaporate the target material. It may be gallium, arsenic or anything which we require. So the speciality of these nuts and cell is these nuts and cell is used to measure the vapor pressures of solids even if their vapor pressure is very low and such a solid forms a vapor at a very low pressure by the process of sublimation and we know sublimation means the conversion of or transition of a substance directly from solid state to the gaseous state. So in the first step we have just evaporated or sublimed the target materials from the effusion cells. So we are having the gaseous elements now and in the second step the gaseous elements will then condense onto the wafer where they may react with each other. So if you take the example of gallium arsenide let us say. So in one effusion cell let us say we are having gallium with a blue color and in another effusion cell we are having ultra pure form of arsenic which is in red color effusion cell. So in first step they are heated and sublimation takes place. So here we are having gaseous form of arsenic and here we are having gaseous form of gallium. So they are coming and condensing over the substrate and when the condensation takes place they may react with each other only near the substrate and finally we are getting a single crystal of gallium arsenide which is the speciality of MBE technique. Then coming to the third step when evaporation sources like copper or gold are used the gaseous elements which are impinging onto the surface may be adsorbed or get reflected back. Adsorption means just they are going to stick onto the surface and also there is another chance of desorption. So the atoms on the surface may also get desorbed. So these three phenomena can take place especially when the sources are like copper and gold. Then what is the important thing which we need to know? So the fourth point is with respect to the temperature control. So controlling the temperature of the source will control the rate of material which is impinging onto the substrate surface. So as the temperature is going on changing then sublimation is also going with respect to the temperature based on which the conversion from solid state to gaseous form is going to change and finally it is going to effect onto the rate of material which is going to impinge or reach to the substrate and the temperature of the substrate will affect the rate of hopping or desorption. So we can say that the main game is played by the different types of temperatures which will be maintained within the reaction chamber. Then the evaporated atoms do not interact with each other or the vacuum chamber gases until they reach the wafer due to the long mean free paths of the atoms. So the atoms whichever are evaporated from the effusion cells here if it is gallium and here if it is 
arsenic they are not going to interact with each other until they reach the substrate that is where the thin film is going to be formed so here the interaction can take place but before that there is no interaction and also if there are some carrier gases in the vacuum chamber they are not going to interact with those carrier gases and this is due to the long mean free path of the atoms whichever is involved and that's why we just say it as a molecular beam epitaxy that is beam word is used we are not going to get single atoms which are coming out from the effusion cells and finally they are going to react somewhere and finally the thin film will be formed that is not the case but here there will be directed beam of atoms which will finally react where the goal is there or the substrate is present so this is the main point which we need to remember due to the long mean free paths of the atoms these atoms are not going to get interacted with each other and that's why they look as separate beams of atoms due to which we get the name molecular beam epitaxy coming to another important term that is r h e e d gun also there is a screen so what actually is the working of this device so during operation this r h e e d which means reflection high energy electron diffraction that is r h e e d or we can just say read gun so these are often used for monitoring the growth of the crystal layers and this is the tool which can be used to characterize the crystalline structure the quality chemical composition of the surfaces even measure the growth rates also calibrate the surface temperatures characterize the flux ratio so this is a very important and most useful tool used in mbe technic and in short i will let you know how it works this reed gun uses an electron gun to send the high energy electrons at the gazing incidence to the substrate which can be observed in the diagram and there diffraction is going to take place and the electrons are going to interfere constructively or destructively at specific angles according to the crystal structure interatomic spacing at the sample surface so finally the electrons which are diffracted will be recorded on to the reed screen and the working is similar to that of the x ray diffraction but only difference is that here high energy electrons will be incident on to the substrate where diffraction is going to take place and this will be with respect to the different parameters of the crystal and the data will be collected on the reed screen based on the type of interference and this data also depends on the wavelength of the electrons that is same as in case of bragg's law which gives us 2d sin theta equal to n lambda that is phase difference is integral multiple of incident wavelength and the same principle works here also so let's come back to molecular beam epitaxy technique and we understood the application of reed gun and reed screen which is used to monitor the growth of crystal layers moving to the next in the systems where the substrate needs to be cooled because we observe that we have the heating element associated with the substrate and in the systems where the substrate needs to be cooled the ultra high vacuum environment within the growth chamber is maintained by a system of cryo pumps and cryo panels and what actually are these these are the tools which are chilled using the liquid nitrogen or even cold nitrogen gas to a temperature of nearly 77 kelvin or we can say minus 196 degrees celsius so these are acting as something like a coolant so the cold surfaces act as a sink for impurities in the vacuum chamber and that's why we can obtain a good quality thin film over the substrate and in some systems the wafers on which the crystals are grown may be mounted on a rotating platter wafers mean the substrate on which the crystals are grown and it is mounted to a rotating platter which can be heated again to several hundred degrees during the operation because the gaseous elements which come out of the effusion cells are going to react onto the substrate only 
elsewhere it is not interacting with each other and finally if we need a single crystal there has to be some interaction with respect to different elements which are coming out and that's why this rotating platter can be heated during the operation. So this is what is the methodology which is going to take place within the reaction chamber of molecular beam epitaxy technique of thin film deposition. So just to brief out, we have the target material in ultra pure form within the effusion cells where the effusion cells can be heated and these are going to come out as a beam because they are not going to interact with each other and finally they are going to condense over to the substrate and the crystal growth, the composition and every detail can be monitored using the read gun which will be read on the read screen. Also the temperature, the pressure, everything will be monitored within the chamber. So this is about molecular beam epitaxy method and let us note down some points which are again important when we come across MBE technique. So molecular beam epitaxy is also used for deposition of some types of organic semiconductors especially in which rather than atoms the molecules itself are evaporated and deposited onto the wafer that is onto the substrate. So the molecule need not be break down into atoms because the whole molecule is going to be evaporated and condensing over to the substrate. So that is the important feature of MBE technique. Then the MBE systems can be modified according to the requirements. Like for example, oxygen sources can be incorporated for depositing oxide materials for we can say advanced electronic, magnetic and optical applications and also for the fundamental research. So this modification is another important feature of MBE technique. So as per the requirements for the practical purposes, we can just modify the MBE system and get the outputs. So this is the detail about MBE technique and in thin film physics till now we have come across thermal evaporation method which is a PVD technique that is physical vapor deposition technique, then CVD that is chemical vapor deposition technique, MOCVD that is metal organic chemical vapor deposition technique. And in other methods, we have just dealt with the epitaxial growth technique, which is nothing but molecular beam epitaxy. So these four methods are very important and generally used as per the requirements. From a very rude type of method, we have just come to a method where we are getting a very high and ultra pure thin films even the polycrystalline thin film also the single crystal. So these are the main techniques which are used to deposit thin films which I hope you have understood and I was able to convince you all. And in the next class of condensed matter physics we will be dealing with the thickness measurement techniques. So first we understood what actually are thin films then we understood how we are going to prepare thin films using different methodology and in our next class we will start with understanding how we can measure the thickness of the thin film because main thing in the thin film is the thickness itself. So different methods will be discussed in our next class. Till then study well and in case of any doubts you can just comment below. If you understood the content then do share it with your friends and also follow Gyan Sampada. Thank you for watching.